Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added the option to select units, we can now select single units or select multiple units by holding the shift key. In this episode we also want to add the option to have a draggable selection box like you usually find in RTS games. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a canvas because this will be the UI for the selection box and this canvas is going to be named whatever you want but the important part are the things that we're going to set over here make sure that it is a screen space overlay and a constant pixel size the other thing that we need is a graphic raycaster but all of these things are going to be created automatically this is the default settings that we get when we create this canvas but if not then just make sure that it's the same as mine then as a child of this canvas we're going to create a ui image and we're going to name it selection graphic And the canvas itself we can rename to be unit selection UI or unit selection box. Now we select the selection graphic image and over here we need to make sure that the width and the height are 100 over 100 and we basically don't want to change anything we want to leave it as default. What we do want is to change the color of this image to be something greenish and again you can change this later you can make it a bit more visually appealing but for now we're just going to keep it at this we can also lower the alpha a bit so it will be a bit transparent and that's all we need to do over here now on our unit selection box parent which is the canvas we're going to create a script and we're going to name it the same way unit selection box now inside of the script we're going to have a bunch of things but it's kind of technical and it's pretty long I don't want to go over this entire script because it's something that you're going to create once and leave so I provided a link to this entire script in the description all you need to do is copy this entire script copy it and paste it inside the script itself so you simply select everything you delete and you paste the code over here also make sure that you get all of these namespaces otherwise you're going to get errors and another thing you need to make sure is that the file name is the same as this one so if for some reason you gave the file a different name it's going to give you an error so make sure that both the file and the actual class inside have the same name so as i told you there's a lot of technical things here and I don't want to explain every single line but we're basically just drawing this draggable selection box. We're checking the first position of the mouse and then as long as we move and we drag this selection box it will increase the size of the selection box, it will draw the actual vectors and it will increase the size of the image itself. So if we move this way it's going to increase and move the image this way and then it's just going to give us this effect so again you don't need to know all of this but what we do need to create is this drag select unit and even if you save this it's going to give you an error because we still don't have this method created so inside our unit selection manager we need to generate this method and we can simply do it by again hovering show potential fixes generate method and it's going to generate this method inside of the selection manager because when we release this selection box it will check all the units that are present inside of this box and it's going to select them so it's going to go over all of these units and it's going to check if these units are inside of our all units list and then it's going to basically select these units so it's going to select them using this drag select method so if we open the unit selection manager we can see that this method was added over here and as i told you in the previous episode we have this method to select by clicking and then we also have this method for multiple select but this is the third method of selection this drag select so we need to add the code inside of it as well to be able to select the units that were sent as an argument 
the first thing we need to do is simply check if these units are not selected. So if unit selected contains unit false, so if this list does not contain this unit, we want to add it to this list. So unit selected, add the unit. We also want to trigger our indicator, trigger selection indicator. We're going to pass in the unit and true. And we also want to enable the movement of the unit. So enable unit movement and unit and true. Now you can make this a bit more efficient because you can see that we always use both of these methods together. We can see it over here and over here and over here. So you can even create another method that will be named select unit and then it will simply call both of these methods and you can simply call this method and it will decrease the amount of lines that you have over here but we're not going to do it because then you also need to pass in, well, if you want to see how it's done to be a bit more efficient, so private void select select unit. We're going to pass inside a Boolean and the unit. And we're going to call both of these methods and it's going to use the same unit and it's going to use the same boolean. And now we can simply call this method instead of always mentioning both of these methods because they will always come together. So we're simply going to remove this and call this method instead and pass in the unit and the true or false, right? So we can take this and remove this, this should be true, and over here it should be false, and over here it should be false, and over here it should be true. And maybe we're using it again, and I think that we don't have it anymore. So we simply called both of these methods inside one method and now we use this one method and we decrease the amount of lines of code and it's more efficient because now if we want to do some kind of change over here we don't need to go and find this multiple times we can simply find it once over here now we can save this and we can also save the unit selection box because we created this and after everything is done loading all we need to do is go to our unit selection box and over here we can see that we need a reference to the actual rect of the visual box. So we simply take the selection graphic and we drag it into the visual box reference. So now if we run the game, we can see that we can actually click, left click and drag this box. And this will basically select the units that are inside this box. And like in some RTS games, when we drag this selection box over the unit, it usually selects them while this box is on top of them. So we can know that they're selected. We don't need to wait until we release it to select them, right? So we're going to also enable this inside our game. So inside the unit selection box script, we're going to add a line of code that you don't have in the original script. So over here, when dragging, while dragging, we also want to select the units, not only when we release, but also when we drag it. And we also want to deselect them if we are not hovering over them, right? Because if the selection box is over the unit, it should select it. But if we move the selection box from the unit, it should deselect the unit. So we're going to simply go into our selection manager and call the deselect method over here. So unit selection manager instance deselect. Well, I think it's not public. So let's go over here, deselect all. And we're going to make it public. And then over here, we can 
access it, deselect all. And now let's see if everything is working. So now if we drag this selection box over the units, they're going to be selected as the box is over them. And if we move the box, they will be unselected. So that's the way it works in RTS games. And of course, if we release, they are going to be selected and we can move them. And now everything feels very natural. So if you have some experience with RTS games, it will really feel good at this point. Obviously, we have this marker that should be a bit more visual. We should add some animation, some colors to it, so we can actually see where the units are moving. We can also change this selection indicator to be a bit more appealing, but for now we're just building the logic, we're building the basic way things are working, and later we're going to deal with the aesthetics of the game as well. Although, again, it's just a tutorial, so don't expect anything too crazy. Before we end this episode, I just noticed a few things that may cause us problems in the future. So the first thing is, if we go to our unit and we click on the indicator, we can see that it is on the clickable layer, but it doesn't make any sense because we don't want to be able to click on the indicator. And if for some reason we're going to click on it, it can cause different problems because it's going to try to add the indicator into the units list. So all we need to do is simply remove it from the clickable layer. So for this, we go to the resources, to our unit prefab, to the indicator, and we remove it to the default layer. And then all of our indicators will be on the default layer. And this will prevent future possible errors. The next problem that I noticed is that after we added this selection box, we cannot select a single unit. And I can even show you this. So if we try to select a single unit, it simply won't select the unit. And that's just because some code that we added inside the selection box script. So inside the selection box script, if we go over here, we have this part that we want to select and deselect the units using the selection box. But this is running each time we're clicking on the left mouse button and it's the same input for the selection of the unit. So when we try to click on the unit, it will automatically run this code as well and it's going to deselect it. So it will always deselect the unit and we won't be able to even select it. That's why we need to add some kind of if statement over here to run this code only if we're actually using the selection box. And the way we can do this is by checking if the size of the selection box is big enough. Because if we go back over here and we run the game and then we click on the selection graphic, we can see that in the beginning, the width and the height is zero, zero. But when we drag and make it bigger, we can see that the size is getting bigger. So we basically want to check if the size is bigger than zero, it means that we are using the selection box and only then we want to run this code. Otherwise, if we just want to click on our unit, we don't want to run this code. So over here, we're going to add an if statement and we're going to place this code inside. So this will only run if we're actually using the selection box. So we can add a check over here. And to do this, we're simply going to use this visual box, which is the rect itself. So we're going to add it over here and then we're going to check rect with if it's bigger than zero or if the height is bigger than zero, then it means that our selection box is actually getting bigger and it means that we're using it. That's why we want to run this code. Otherwise, if we just click on our unit, then we don't want to run this code. And now if we run the game, we can select our units and we don't have this problem anymore and we can still use the selection box and it will deselect the units when we are not over them anymore. But when we just want to click on a unit, it will work as intended. 
So that's all for this episode. If you want to help me, you can leave a like, it will help with the algorithm. And of course, if you have any ideas or anything that you want to ask me in the comment section, you can post it there. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.